push rod hydraulic lifter preload. We're gonna do it the easy way okay. without any kind of fancy and, tools. And those are both stock, so any yes. any curb pulling off will happen. I have not taken them apart at all. They're just how they came. The cam stock, the, the timing chain stock, and both of these are that way. Granted, this one has the original heads and the original push rods, the same cam, but we're gonna compare the two and see if they're the same, basically, yep. or how close they are. So what engines? Engines are we dealing with? So this one's a 5.8, a 351 winds rod of a 94 F250. It has aftermarket aluminum heads, which have bigger valves. They're uh, 2.02 on the intake. So do you also have aftermarket springs on this? Yes, yeah, so these are aftermarket heads. Have, these are stock rocker arms. Usually people run like the roller tips or whatever. This is just a stock cam, so um, you know, but even with a stock cam, these have double valve springs. If you look in there close, you can see there's an outer spring and then there's an inner spring. The factory only has one valve spring. So the reason you add two is because, well, for one, the valve's heavier, it's bigger. Like I told you, these aren't the stock valve size. For two, the higher you rev it, even with a stock cam, the more spring pressure you need to return it because you have less time. And if you get to a situation like with the stock heads, even with those little valves and a stock cam, the valve will hang open, it'll float. It limits how high you can rev it. This thing, I'm looking to rev 6,000, maybe 62, if it'll do it. I don't know, a stock cam will be probably out of breath at that point, but um, right now with the stock cam on stock Explorer heads, it's 5,500 and it's floating the valve. So the only way you can raise it is to increase the spring pressure. So yes, these are, stronger valve springs which they have bigger valves or stronger valve springs they're also cast out of aluminum instead of iron all the five liters and 5.8s had iron heads so these are just an aftermarket one with a bigger valve so okay uh, as far as how they're oiled though so how does this top end get oil yep well i didn't check but i should have one of the things they say when you replace these push rods is to blow air through them and make sure that they flow or there's no obstructions because actually the way the valve train gets its oil is through the push rod. So the push rod's drilled with a hole and the oil's pumped through the lifter since it's a hydraulic lifter the oil pump pumps oil into the lifter and then from the lifter it drains into the push rod it comes up here it comes through a hole right here if you look at the top of the rocker it hits that tab splashes down and then it lives all this and then it drains back down into the head. And this is the drain? This is what it looks like when you take the cover off so this is the keyway um, for the crank, there's a dot, and then there's a dot on the cam. And actually, if you look at that tooth straight on, this tooth points right at that dot. And that's telling you that this cam, is that the crank makes two ro rotations for every one turn that the cam makes. So this is telling you you're on the right cam rotation because the, the number one cylinder, and it can be hard to tell unless you have the valve cover off, and can see these marks, but the number one cylinder is on the compression stroke. So we're ready to test this for push rod hydraulic lifter preload. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this razor blade flat over the valve cover mating surface like that. And I'm gonna scratch these push rods, or try to anyways. So I'm gonna touch the push rod with the razor blade and I'm just gonna try to cut it and see if I can put a little mark around it, okay? So we've got a line, see that? We've got a line there. I'm going to rotate it around. Cut a little line. All right. So this is with it torqued down. I'm going to do the same for this one. This one's the more interesting one to me because it hasn't been messed with. It's just fresh out of the junkyard. The heads haven't been pulled. As far as I know, the gaskets haven't been pulled. So if this, if they're close between that engine and this engine, then I know I've done something right. If they're way off, then I might be worried. <clears throat> Hopefully I'm not worried. I don't want to be worried about this, Kevin. <laughs> there we go. That's the key to hold it flat against it and then just rotate the push rod and let the push rod do it. Cause otherwise that razor blade's moving and I don't wanna, you know, we're looking at the difference between like 10 thousandths 
I might have to redo this one because it's <laughs> kind of a messy line. It's a lot more visible though. It is. Well, this one's not hardened, so it's gonna probably cut in a little easier. This one I feel good about. We'll start with that one. So that's the first part. Now, the second part. That's what these rockers torque to 25 foot pounds. We raise them up. Okay, so now these push rods have now stood up out of there a little bit. And we want to measure, we want to make another line with this, this thing against that clip. See now how there's no preload, that, that piston's up against the clip. Before, if you look at the other ones, there's a gap. That's the hydraulic lifter preload. That's what we're measuring to see if it's in spec. So now that I've loosened these, I, I'm going to tighten them back up until this isn't flopping around like that. You need it at least to stay there, but not enough to push it off that clip. So I'm just going to tighten it until it moves off the clip and then back it back out. So you can see when I'm, that's preloading it, that's no preload. Preload, no preload, right? One, two, three. So that's preload, and I'm just doing this by hand. That's no preload. Preload, no preload. Where so are we looking exactly? That clip. Is it seized? Well, it looks like it's still pressed down a little bit, even though I've taken all the slack yeah. off. It still looks pressed down. You see that? Yeah, it's seized or something, yeah. It's oh, a little, there you go. It's a little stuck. Yeah, that's good now. It was just a little stuck. It's got some gunk in there. Okay, see that now? You can see this is just by hand and the, the valve's not opening at all, but you can see that lifter preload from the push rod. Yep. So it makes sense why if this rod is shorter or longer, it's gonna push more or less, or if this, this head is taller and some, you know, there's a whole lot of tolerances that stack up here to give you this spec. And any variable you change you're gonna to wanna to check this again to make sure that you're not uh, out of spec too much. And the way I understand it is too little lift or preload is worse than too much. The provided you don't have uh, a real small piston to valve clearance because that could cause your valve to hang open. And actually I've seen people that have dynoed putting quote unquote the wrong push rods in like 50 thousandths too long and they actually made more power. So it doesn't really cost you power, but this is big on your, um, wear and tear and longevity of your build. So again, I'm gonna get that thing to where it's just sitting on that clip and then scrape this push rod with a line. Oh, I can tell you right now, just by looking at this, that that other engine has more lift or preload than this one. I'll measure it, but it sure, it sure looks like the other one may have a little bit more. We'll see. Okay, so now that those are marked, all you need is a pair of calipers. And you take the push rod out, and you measure those two marks, and we're going to measure what these are. They're all going to vary a little bit, and compare them to these, and see see if it's good and that's it Kevin then after that I'm ready to bolt it in for good hopefully I'm probably just gonna run it Kevin I'm just gonna run it yeah see what happened do you think it's gonna blow up where did you get this from? did you make this the engine yeah yeah I've put it together wasn't it running before uh, not with these heads. Oh, 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 I don't know. I don't. It was just out of a junkyard truck. Gotcha. It looks okay. Do you think it's gonna blow up? I don't know, man. I don't know. Kevin, you gotta have an opinion. You gotta call it. I'm just gonna leave that. This is preload. Your, this is your area of expertise, Mister. I'm gonna leave that hydraulic preload. It's wrong. It's a hundred thousandths. It's supposed to be twenty to sixty. That engine was 50, and I think this one's more like 100. I can always come back in and shim it later, I guess, but it 
seems to have too much preload. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's okay, right? <laughs> At least I know what it is. It might not be right, but I know it. It's not right. Okay, so we'll see. What in the hell? <laughs> we had to do some tool repair here to do this work. So the rocker under spec is 20 foot pounds. I was wrong. I thought it was 25. Now, but if this is uh, stamped, it shouldn't matter 20 or 25 pound difference. It's, it's going to still stop at the same. That's exactly right. Distance. And the only risk you run is you could snap your bolts off or strip the threads. But yeah. that is correct. Once it's bottomed out, it's bottomed out. You have no. Uh, additional preload that's completely dictated by the geometry in which this is bolted and you know the distance between here so if you yep. put a longer push rod in it's going to have more preload yep if you put a shorter push rod in it's going to have less did you measure the distance between these two the stock push rod and these aftermarket ones i did uh actually no i don't have a calipers that can measure that so i'm gonna not wipe these off this time and try it again <laughs> But I can tell just by looking at it, it looks way more than the other one. Yep. The question is, is that okay? Or is that something I should, should I shim these rockers? Because I can shim them and then get it, you know. The same. The distance. same, yeah, as the other engine at least. A hundred thousandths exactly. Still, yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be 20 to 60. So I could put little washers in here underneath these between the head and that that stamp steel tray. Yep. And that would lift these up when they're torqued down. I would only need, you know, 20 thousandths or so. Or I can leave it. Do you have a vote? Should we vote on this? I would, I would shim it right. Should we rock, paper, scissors? Sure. If I win, they go in as they are. If you win, I shim them. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. What is that one? 80? That one's 80. Yeah. yeah good. I'm surprised you saw that from the side like that. It's a good eye, Kevin. This is the factory push rod. It's not hardened. It's real light, I mean, compared to these. But they have these little balls i don't know if they're pressed into the end welded into the end or what um but they'll they can break off or i've seen pictures of people that bend them if you rev them too high so these ones are uh 80 thousandths wall thickness aftermarket um i think they're chromoly either way they're heat treated mm -hmm. and and they don't have this this ball arrangement they're all one piece so they're supposed to be a lot more reliable i mean you really need that for if you're going to rev it higher or run a more aggressive cam profile, or if you're gonna to go to two valve springs where you have that extra resistance on your push rod or any of those combinations, or if you change the head or the cam, you know, you gotta check this hydraulic lifter preload to see if it's in spec. If it's too long, you could end up, you know, not having the valve close all the way up, and if it's hung open, then you can, you know, have a poor idle, or worst case scenario, you could hit a valve on a piston if it floats or if, um you know if it's too close to begin with so it is pretty important to make sure that it's within the region here's the hardened ones you can see see that tip i was telling you about and that geometry i still feel like you know the way these are cut is going to change your preload it can if it's a little bit different and again, you start with a longer push rod if you had to choose because you can always shim your rockers to get the correct preload. But if you start with too short of a push rod, you can't do anything other than buy new push rods, which you don't want to do. So I went a little longer, like 30 thousandths longer than stock. So we're going to measure these. So all you got to do is use a caliper and measure this, this right here to see how much the hydraulic lifter preload is. And this, again, is going to probably be like plus or minus 20 thousandths. But right there, I have like 100 thousandths. That is probably too much. That's, that's considered out of spec. 100 exactly on that one. This one, those lines sure are hard to see on these hardened ones. Yeah, they are. 
That one was hard to see. Yeah, but I can kind of see it. It's right here. This is one of these lifters. It's called a hydraulic roller. And this is called the dog bone right here. So the dog bone, you see it says up. Yep. This is the dog bone retainer and this is the dog bone. So this mm -hmm. lifter sits on top of the cam and it, and it rolls on the cam lobe. It sits right on top of that. Okay. Um, and obviously if it rotates, you're gonna have a problem because now it's not Can't rolling, roll. it's kind of turning, right? You're gonna wear this thing out. Yep. So the dog bone's purpose is to hold this lifter See how it's keyed, it's yeah. Keyed. Yep. So it can't turn, so it's gonna it's gonna hold it flat. Now, you can see a little better when it's taken out. How when all the pressure's off, you see the retainer ring. There's a little tiny oh, ring, see, yeah. and then there's the piston, which is actually there's no gap between them. If you look at it when you tighten down the rockers, then you can see that this push this plunger. I can pretty much almost push it down with my finger a little bit. Gotcha. It'll go down a lot when this isn't pumped up with oil. No, so is that is that right though? Is the what does the oil in the pan lubricate the timing chain, or does it actually never get lubricated from the engine oil? That's a good question. I think that it gets, I think it gets splashed around, but I yeah. don't really know exactly how if there's a route for it to get to these components directly. I don't think there is. I think it just, just it just gets stance. it gets lubricated by proxy. Yep, makes sense. Oh, something else I was going to ask or tell you. I don't remember what it is now. Oh, rock, paper, scissors. Are we doing this now? All right. Yeah, I'm going to do it behind my back. Johnny, good to see you, man. <laughs> this is about Johnny. <laughs> Send this to Johnny. Okay. You're doing your, your back. All right, Kevin. I'm going to do it behind my back. So if I win, are we doing three? Best of three? Is that what you're saying? Best of three? Okay. So if I win... It's gonna to go together as is. If you win, I'm gonna shim it. Yeah. That's you're 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 determining the fate right now, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, let's do this. Okay. Okay. I'm not gonna look. So oh, okay. Okay. Rock, rock, paper, paper scissors. scissors. Go. Oh All no. Right. There's one. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Yep. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh yeah, baby. No. <laughs> You're oh man. <laughs> You're shimming. You're I'm shimming. Shim